Hi everybody, there's a new plugin and a new guest. And I'm happy to have him here um, because the new plugin needs some explanation and maybe there's not only a new plugin, but you can also learn a bit from him. And um, yeah, I'm glad that he's here because he's exactly the right guy for this nerd stuff thing. Hi, my name is Leonard Facchinetti, and in this video, I am going to introduce the latest plugin by Toucan Studios, Limiter 3. So let's get right to it. If you're interested in getting this plugin, you can get it from Repack, the link is in the description. And this is what the plugin looks like the first time you load it. It's just a couple of knobs, nothing too scary. The terminology is pretty standard, so you should feel familiar the first time you load this plugin and have an intuition as to how to use this. Also, as typical for the other Toucan Studio plugins as well, you can move the knobs, but you can also hold Shift while moving the knob for some fine tuning and you can hold command or control to click and reset the knob. Over here on these meters, you can see the levels of the signal coming in. You can see the gain reduction, right now there is none. And you can see the levels of the signal going out. And if you feel like you really need to dig in there, you can move this meter around to zoom in and out of these meters. And this is all very good and pretty standard, but my favorite visualization is actually under here on the meters and scope. This allows you to see the signal going through in real time. And then again, if you need more detail, you can click and drag to zoom in and out. This number over here will show what the zooming situation is for you right now. So let's see what Limiter 3 is capable of. You can see here on the right, the loudness meter that comes with Reaper. And as I bring down this knob, you can see the levels going up, but never going over 0 dB. And of course, this is very aggressive. So let's back off a little and listen to what Limiter 3 sounds like in a real song. The stream is about to start. We'll talk about cold or whatever we'll talk about today. It's about to start, so please hang tight while I check that everything is... Yeah, I know this is overcooked, but we were able to get pretty loud with Limiter 3. Okay, so a listening test is great, and in a moment I'm going to go over these knobs and talk about the different workflows you can have in Limiter 3. But first, let's take a moment to really understand what a limiter is and what you can do with one. Perhaps you have heard this one in the past or even said it yourself. A limiter is just a compressor with fast attack and high ratio. That's a lie. Stop saying that. Well, it's not entirely a lie, but it's also not entirely true. Sure, a limiter will reduce the volume differences between the loudest and quietest parts of the signal, the so-called dynamic range. But what you expect from a limiter and what you expect from a compressor and the way that you control these two kinds of effects are not quite the same. Here is what you would expect from a perfect limiter. First, no samples that go over the limit. So if you say that the limit is, for instance, minus 6 dB, no sample is allowed to go over minus 6 dB. Hey, this requirement is pretty self-evident. Here's an idea of how to accomplish it. If any sample goes over the limit, you clip it off. Well, sure, no samples are going to go over the limit, but this is distortion, and we don't want a limiter to distort. If we wanted that, we would turn to a distortion effect. Limiters are supposed to be transparent as much as possible. And third, and depending on the context you may or may not care about this, you would want your limiter to be zero latency. Now here is something said about the universe, you cannot have all three at the same time. If you want to have no samples over the limit and no distortion, it means that you need to start lowering the volume before the loud sample arrives. Well, to be able to do that, you need to introduce some latency. If you want to have no samples over the limit and no latency, then you will need to clip the loud signal when it comes through, at least a little bit, maybe not as bad as this. And if you want absolutely no latency and no distortion, well, some samples are gonna go over the limit. So this is one of those situations of pick any two. For example, you may want to have no samples over the limit and no distortion, but allow a little bit of latency. Most limiters you find will do this kind of trade-off because they're useful for things like mastering. And in that context, it doesn't really matter if there is a little bit of latency. Alternative 
Alternatively, if you're doing something like a broadcast, you may want no samples over the limit and no latency because you are broadcasting live, and you may allow a little bit of distortion here and there. And finally, if you are in some kind of sound design situation, you may want to have no distortion and no latency, but allow a couple samples to go over the limit because the sound is going to be processed even further down the line anyway, and the other processing may take care of that. And the cool thing about limiter 3 is that depending on how you use it, it can be all these three different types of limiters. Here, I will show you. When it comes to putting a plugin under the microscope, you may have heard of Plugin Doctor, and while it is great, I don't think it's the best tool for this case. First, because it requires you to have a plugin in VSC3 or audio unit format, but we are talking about the JS effects. I think that if you use hardware and do some clever internal routing on your computer, it's possible to use Plugin Doctor with JS effects, but I haven't really tried. And besides, when it comes to something like a limiter, it may be helpful to see LUFS meters and other kinds of things along with the kinds of things that Plugin Doctor could show you. Anyway, I think I have something better and it is free. Here's what you'll need. First, a tone generator that comes with Reaper. Let's put the wet mix at 0 dB. Then come here to Param, Parameter Modulation MIDI Link, LFO, Square, Negative, and lower the strength. Now we have this sine wave that keeps bouncing up from minus 18 to 0 dB. Now let's add an oscilloscope that also comes with Reaper. Perhaps we can zoom out a little and zoom out on the timescale as well. Finally, for good measure, let's add the LUFS meter that also comes with Reaper. Now, all you have to do is put the plugin or the plugin chain that you want to test between the tone generator and the meters. The first question I want to answer is, are there samples over the limit? Well, to test this, let's just lower the limit and reset the meter, and yeah, it's never getting over minus 7. Pretty good. But the truth is that if you are a bit unlucky, it may be the case that all the samples don't go over your limit, but when it's time to reconstruct an analog signal from these samples, that may go over the limit. This is something called intersample peaks, and we don't want that. Well, lucky for us, Limiter 3 has intersample peak detection. When you enable this, you lower the chance of going over the limit by a whole lot. You can operate under the assumption that you are never going over the limit when you recreate the analog signal. And the way that this works is pretty straightforward. When you enable intersample peak protection, Limiter 3 is going to oversample the signal eight times. That is, Limiter 3 will reconstruct the analog signal between the samples, and that's what will be used by the detector. Next, let's look at distortion. For that, we can zoom in right at this point where the limiter is engaging. And what we see here is pretty good. The wave is never clipped. There is this weird shape here, but that's limiter 3 lowering the volume in preparation for the loud signal that is going to come in. And whatever audible artifacts that could come out of this are going to be masked by the loud signal anyway. Okay, and what about latency? Well, limiter 3 is introducing some latency, but not a whole lot. This is one millisecond. So with all of this in mind, I think it's finally time for us to look at the controls, and I really like the way that limiter 3 is laid out. The signal goes from left to right, and you can control the volume going in, you can control the limit, and you can control the volume going out. Let's start in this middle section. First of all, do you want to enable or disable intersample peaks? Well, as far as I understand, it is a matter of CPU use. For instance, on my machine right now, with this enabled, it's taking about 0.6% of my CPU. And when I disable it, it's about half of that. Most often, I think that people should have this on, and it is the default. Next, there is the limit, and it is pretty self-explanatory. As you bring this down, the signal is going to be limited. Hey! If you are in a broadcast kind of situation and you're using the limiter to prevent loud noises from going out, you can just pretty much set this to a value and you're good to go. Then again, it will not be zero latency, but one millisecond is pretty good. At least you're guaranteed to never go over. Next, let's look at this shape over here. What happens after the loud noise is over? You can see that the level isn't recovered immediately. There is a bit of a curve. In most cases, you will not be able to hear this level going up, but in some situations you might. And that's when you want to adjust the release. See, now it's taking a lot of time for the volume to recover. And now it is recovering very fast. I find it very cool that you don't even need the oscilloscope meter to see this. You can see this on the waveform right here. If you're using limiter 3 for music, you'll probably want to play around with the release to achieve the most transparent results. Next, let's look at the input gain. 
What it does is pretty self-explanatory, but the way I like to use it is in some kind of sound design situation, I set a lower limit and I increase the gain until I hear something I like and I'm good to go. And finally here on the right is the output gain and limiter tree has some pretty nice tricks going on here. When you engage the maximizer option, the limit and the output gain are linked. You have no control over the output gain anymore. It is going to compensate for the limit. What this means is that if you're mastering, for instance, and you want to achieve a certain volume, you can just start dragging the limit down. This will have the effect of keeping the loudest signal as it is, but bringing up the quietest signal, effectively turning up the volume of the whole song. And at this point, you may be thinking, hmm, hey, it will be difficult to judge what limiter tree is doing because I'm listening to two signals with different loudnesses when I bypass it. Hey, limiter tree has you covered. Click on the listen button and the out gain will be turned off. So now as you bypass, the sound will not get louder, it will get quieter and you can actually hear the effect of the limiter and see if you like what it's doing. And one last thing that I want to point out, you see these two scopes for left and right channels, but the plugin is not working in dual mono, it's actually working in stereo. See, even if one of the channels becomes quieter, there is still some gain reduction happening there. And that's all there is to it. If you want to get Limiter Tree, you can go to the Toucan Studios Repack repository. And thank you very much to John for inviting me to do this video. Bye.